you like saving money. I like saving money. I mean, let's be real. Who doesn't like saving money? And with the way things seem to be going recently, we could all use a little bit of savings where we can find them. So today, here's what we're going to talk about. 10 things, and I'm going to hit 10 uh, ways that, to save money when buying a new construction home. Talk a ton of new construction here on this channel. So we're going to do top 10 ways to save money when you're buying that new home. Here we go. Let's get into it. So right off the bat, I'm just going to tell you, some people will say, hey, so this is going to be number one. Uh, you're going to go, you're looking in a neighborhood or a you know, master plan community, and you're going to see a handful of different builders, anywhere between two and seven in some of these communities. And you start looking at pricing and you're going to be like, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, that one, cheapest price. And you're going to just decide that, hey, because it's the cheapest price that's listed, I'm going to buy that house and I'm going to save the most money. I'm going to tell you, you are wrong. Do not, do not, do not buy from the cheapest builder in the neighborhood. They're, they're, there's a reason they're the cheapest. Because here's the thing. Their quality is probably not going to be the same as the builder next door. Just, just putting that out there. And so while you think you can cheap out now on the front end, you're actually probably going to pay for it later, right? So here's what I mean. When you're looking at builders, you can't just look at price. You have to look at what's included in terms of upgrades. What are you getting? How much selection are you getting? How are they doing their building material? Are you getting a bigger lot? Are you getting a smaller lot? Where is it located within that community? Uh, what's standard versus what's not standard versus what do you have no chance of getting whatsoever from that other builder? And so just because they show to be the cheapest and they build them the quickest and they give you no selections, you know who I'm talking about. They are not the best option because here's the thing. You're going to save money now, but you're going to end up spending that money later because what's going to happen is you're going to get in for the cheapest amount possible and then something's going to go wrong. You're like, oh, we got to replace the kitchen sink because it's ugly. Or we're doing all these different light fixtures because everything's so bland. And you're going to end up spending that money later, right? Or you're like, oh, the flooring is terrible. We got to pull it up. Or you're going to have problems and you're going to have to have somebody out there fixing your home and constantly dealing with warranty. Don't go with the cheapest building in the neighborhood. Go with quality. Ask questions um, because I promise you what you think you're going to save now is actually going to cost you more later. And it's going to save you the headache. So that's number one. Number dose. Two, we're going to intermix. It's, it's good. <laughs> Number two, pay attention to the lot size. So if you're comparing uh, two different, like you've said, hey, this is the city I want to be in. There's two developments going on. Ask about the lot size because it's not always an apples to apples comparison. Here's what I mean. So one builder may say, hey, we've got homes, you know, from 350 to 450 and, you know, we're a great builder. And it's like, well, what lot sizes are you building? Well, uh, these are 35. Wait, can you say that again louder? Uh, well, they're 35 and 40. 35 and 40, are you kidding me? Or in some cases, guys, I'm not even kidding. I've seen people start doing 30 foot lots. And it's like, what are y'all thinking? 30 foot lots. Oh, here's what they're thinking. I got them. Uh, we just want people to develop a real sense of community. We're going to call BS on that. The code is y'all just want to make more money. So a $350,000 home on a 30 and 40 foot lot versus a $380,000 home on a 50, 60, or 70 foot lot, they are not the same. So be mindful. If you want more backyard space, if you want uh, to be able to put a playground or a trampoline or a swimming pool or any, like if, if you don't care about a bigger backyard, that's fine. We can find that. But just be mindful, like if, as you're looking in these uh, different cities and you're comparing this community to that community, and even within some of those communities, this builder to that builder, ask about the lot size because 70 feet versus 30 or 40 feet, again, and that's the measurement on the front side. So it's like the linear footage on the side versus, and then the depth of the backyard, it makes a huge, huge difference. Perfect example, out here where I'm at in Roy City, we have builders that are doing, uh, there's a couple different communities that are like high threes to mid fours, but they are 30 and 40 foot lots. Okay, so that's not bad. 30, 40, 45 maybe. Uh, we have another couple of builders that are doing, that are like high threes to like high fours, and they are 60, 70, 75 foot lots. Same city, different neighborhood, different amenities. So just if you wanna save money, uh, ask about the lot because those lot sizes are important and it's not always a fair comparison one side to the other. So number three, number three, this is important understand how a price reduction affects the equity that you have in your home. A lot of times, especially here in DFW, 
where if you look at homes, you start seeing builders advertise. It's like, oh, this home has $40,000 in upgrades and we've reduced it by 20,000 and all of these different things because they have this inventory that they have to move. And we had pricing from 2020, 21, 22 when supplies were stupid and they, they went up through the roof, right? Well, and so now they've either had contracts bust or people couldn't get financing or inventory, whatever the reason, and you start seeing price reductions the longer these houses sit. A price reduction does not mean there's something wrong with the house. In most cases, that's super important to understand. Price reduction is different than an appraisal. So it, because just because they are reducing the price and they're not taking away your equity. So what you have to understand is from an equitable position, that's like how much, you know, the gap between what you owe versus what it, the bank says it's worth or the appraiser says it's worth, that's different, right? So just because they reduced it by $40,000, doesn't necessarily mean that you lost 40,000 in equity. You probably actually have that in equity and will recapture your equity quicker when it comes time to, hey, get a pool or do a HELOC or, or you know, you wanna do renovations down the road. You're gonna recapture that equity because you're buying in at a lower price because that is gonna look at the, the entire development and the neighborhood of like, hey, what sold, when it sold and all of those things. So on the one hand, yes, equity is a made up imaginary number until you use it. But understand that a price reduction doesn't always mean a reduction in your equity. I can show you neighborhoods that have had price reductions, but still on the appraisals, they appraised for way over from where they priced it. So those people, those clients are walking in with tons of equity in that home because they are you know, saving money on the price reduction and it's not changing their equity a ton. So there's that. Four, quattro. Number four, be first. It's real simple. Ricky Bobby said it. If you ain't first, you're last. What does that mean? That means when a new community opens, if you're one of the first people um, to build in that community or the first people to build in that section of the phase, you're going to get the best pricing. Builders have so many homes that they can sell and it's different for every builder, different for every developer, different for every neighborhood. It's like, oh, this is going to be the reduced price. And then they're going to escalate the price and they're going to escalate it again. So you want to be first, get in on those waiting lists to know, hey, as soon as this neighborhood opens, we're getting in, we're getting our contract in, we wanna be first, we don't wanna be last. It's one of the best ways to save money. Number five, this goes with number four. Number five, find a realtor that knows what the heck they're doing in new construction. Listen, I'm, I'm gonna soapbox for a second. Not every realtor is good at everything. Think about like a, a doctor, right? Like, so you've got a general practitioner, you've got a heart doctor, you've got a, you know, I'm almost a cardiologist, that is a heart doctor, a brain doctor, a, a pediatrician, all these different things, right? Most realtors don't, but they should, they should specialize. So, you know, you could do anything from multifamily to single family, to rentals, to investment properties, to Airbnbs, to new constructions, to all these different things. And there are some realtors that get into new construction that don't know what the heck they're doing. And then of course, they are no use to you in the transaction. They're just there collecting their commission and it, it doesn't help anybody. And then the builder sees them as a pariah and they're not. It, it's find a realtor that knows what they're doing. Because when you find somebody like me who knows what they're doing, who specializes in that new construction space, we're gonna go back to number four. And it's like, hey, you wanna be first? You gotta find somebody that has the information to get you in first. You have to find somebody that has the relationships that knows when those communities are coming up, that has the relationships that's getting the texts and the emails of like, hey, uh, we just had a contract bust, I have a home beautiful it's ready to go quick close we've got a ton of incentives on it who do you know right you also need somebody that has relationships with those sales counselors and those builders because they see when they start seeing my name over and over on contracts they understand hey we're you know we have a reputation to maintain we want him to keep bringing us business we want to keep doing business with zach so we need to make sure we take care of his clients also you want somebody that understands the ins and outs of getting your you know home inspection questions design negotiating with a builder price changes at, you you want somebody that has your best interest at heart also can i be really honest you're, you're kind of in the middle of the video so i'm, I'm just going to be honest with you most of the time not all the time most of the time me as a realtor i'm going to give you some sort of financial incentive on top of what the builder's giving you. I don't do it all the time. Um, it's a case by case basis, but builders pay really well. I'm just, just full honesty, full transparency. And when they do that, I like to take care of my clients um, and help with reduce closing costs, help buy down interest rates, whatever I can do. Because again, I value you getting into a home. I mean that I'm not, no, no sales pitch there. Genuinely value you being able to buy a home. And if I can help, and if part of my contribution is helping financially, 
want to be able to do that. But beyond that, you want somebody, even beyond what I give you financially, you want somebody who knows the builders deals and where their deals are, um, how to get more back pocket money, how much back pocket money they've got beyond what they're just advertising, how to you know not blow your budget in design, find a realtor that knows what the heck they're doing. If you want to work with me, I cover all of DFW. I do a ton of new construction contact information. It's right here in the video. Reach out, ask a question. I'm here to answer, advocate, um, and help find you your next new construction home. That's number five. We're halfway through. Number six, let's keep rolling. Six, buy it at the right time. So we talked about, hey, being first in the community. The secondary piece of that is knowing the time of year when to buy. So think about like the business cycle, right? So we operate in four quarters of a year. Buying at the end of a quarter when a builder has to clear their inventory sheets, good time to buy. Also, because you got to think about it, they, they need to clear inventory. Some of these builders, not all of them, some of them are publicly traded, which means they have stockholders to answer to. So what, they, what do they have to do? They have to show profit. They have to show that they made money. How do they show that they made money? They sell houses. So buy a home at the end of a quarter. That's tip number six for saving money on a new construction home, end of a quarter, end of a year. Um, those are some of the best times to get under contract. So if you're watching this video when it comes out, we're coming up on the middle of quarter three, which means we are coming up on a great time to buy with tons of incentives from the builder. End of quarter, save money. Seven goes along with end of quarter. Buy the builder's model. So what do I mean by that? All of these builders, when they open new communities, they build a model, they erect a flagpole. That's how you know the model's there. It's what they do. I don't get the flagpole, but it's a thing. Anyway, buy the model. Oftentimes, either the community is on closeout and they are finishing up and it's the last home that they have available and they need to get out. Or what happens more than people realize is they build a model for a certain phase and then you know it's it's a big development that's been going on for years and then they're moving on to another phase and the developer comes in and says hey we want all of the models to be on one street or the builder says hey we have a new line of product that we're putting out we're going to move to another model buy the model you're going to get a ton of upgrades because that's the their showpiece right that's the one that they're trying to say oh we've got all these different things and all this different potential that could happen um, so the downside is there's going to be a ton of people that have walked through your home and like touched and messed with everything that's a downside plus side is you're getting the all the upgrades that the builder has you're probably getting it at a discount because again either they're closing out the community and they want to be done and need to go or they're moving somewhere else in the community and need to sell the model also a lot of times the furniture you see in those model homes um, they're rented or they're on loan or they're bought um, you can negotiate for that furniture so if you're like i really like that bed that nobody's ever slept like and you're like i want to buy a fully furnished house you can do that or you want part of the furniture or whatever or you want to buy all the furniture and then you know sell it back make some money back you can do that that's part of the, the buying the model so there's some downsides to that but there's another way to save money buy the model number eight saving money this one goes more back to um, when you're designing your home so do not over design your home um, because you're going to spend way too much money in the design center and then when you go to resell your home you're going to have an over upgraded home for the neighborhood so rule of thumb uh, when it comes to design, we want to figure roughly 12 to 15% of base purchase price. So figure out, hey, the base price of your home was, you know, 400,000, you know, for whatever. When you go to design, not this is not structure. This is like finishing out your design. 12 to 15%, give or take one way or the other. You don't want to spend a whole bunch more than that because what's going to happen is when you try to resell that home, you're going to have an over upgraded home or even worse, when you try to buy the home, it's not gonna appraise and you spent too much money, you're not gonna be able to get lending. 12 to 15% is the healthy rule. Uh, so don't over design your home when you go into the design center. Number nine, so this is the anti of the design center, buy from the inventory. Uh, if a builder has a home on inventory from their spec sheet, which means they, be they built it on speculation that somebody was gonna buy it, or they had a bust, which means somebody would like put down earnest money, put a contract on it, and for one reason or another, couldn't close on the home. Maybe they moved, maybe their timeline changed, maybe they lost their job, maybe the interest rate went up and it priced them out. Whatever it is, that's a bust, right? So anything that they have on inventory is gonna have the best deal possible. That's because they have all this money tied up in it. And again, it's a business, they need to sell that home. So buy from the inventory, which means on the trade-off, you don't get to be super picky. You're like, oh, hey, this is what we've got. And you find something that works and hope, and a lot of times you find something that's really great and you really like it. So buy from the inventory, that's gonna get you your best uh, discounts, that's gonna get you your best incentives, that's gonna get you your best lending, 
all of that because they need to close that quickly to get it off the books. The longer the builders had it, the greater the chance you're going to be able to save money on it. Also, this is going to sound cliche, and this is not me like pushing you to overextend your budget, but the more you spend, the more you save. And here's what I mean by that. Most builders operate on a, they're in this business to make money. Shocking. I know a healthy margin from everything I've learned is somewhere between 15 and 30%. Really they want to be between 20 and 30% profit margin. So if you think at a lower price point, if they are, you know, if it's a $300,000 home, they're not going to have as much room to negotiate on price, right? Like they may have a little bit of room and can add a little bit more incentives, but you're not going to get a $50,000 reduction most of the time at the higher price point. So four, five, six, seven, uh, where the profit margin is potentially greater and they have a wider spread. Those are the moments when we start to see the bigger price, the, the 40, the 50, the 70, the 90,000, you know, something like a hundred. And again, there's reasons why all of that is done the way it's been done. But the, the more you spend, the greater chance you have of getting a, a better price reduction. Um, not say that there's not incentives on both sides because there's incentives all throughout. I'm talking about on top of the advertising incentives, what additional can we get based on where it cuts into the builder's margin? And if we're buying on inventory, how do we save? And lastly, you've stayed this long. Number 10, I give this one uh, with a caveat and a grain of salt. Use the builder's lender. So here's I'm going to asterisk this. A lot of times builders have a preferred lender that they use, whether that means that they, you know, like Highland has Highland home loans, which means they own that mortgage company. So they are a builder that also does mortgages. That's like icing on the cake for them. Other builders have preferred relationships, you know, so like Paysetter, who we've built with has preferred relationships with Service First and Benchmark. They don't necessarily own them. That's just their like preferred lender. So what happens is you see these incentives advertised and builders will say, hey, we're going to give you 10, 12, 15, uh, buy you down to 4.99. And what in the fine print is tied to it says this is, you know, using the builder's lender. And so to save money most of the time, not all the time, most of the time, the builder's lender is the way to go. For a lot of companies, they will not even write your contract uh, unless you at least qualify with their lender. Notice to qualify. They can't force you to close with their lender, um, but they will make you get a pre-qualification pre -qualification with their lender before they will let you write the contract. Now, here's what here's why I give the, the thought of the caveat. Some lenders have been known to overinflate the cost of what it takes to write that loan. The lenders make money on writing your loan. Shocked. I know. They're going to make money. And I'm not saying they shouldn't, but what I'm saying is be be mindful. Just look at your fee sheet and say, oh, um, why are you charging me a you know, ridiculous amount in points? Like you're charging me $12,000 in points and you know, that shouldn't cost that. So what we do is you want to take it and you just want to like run it through another lender and say, hey, um, look at what we're getting here. Can you beat this? Like, can you beat it with the incentive money? And, and the builder will say, oh yeah, maybe, oh, you're not going with our lender. So we're going to take your incentive money from 15 to 10. Ultimately, at the end of the day, we want you to get the best deal possible. That's what I care about. So that starts with the builder's lender. That doesn't mean we don't shop it to somebody else and just say, hey, here's what's going on. Can we make this make sense? A lot of times we do end up sticking with the builder's lender. There are some occasions when an outside lender can beat that lending price and get you a better deal. We just want you to be aware you can go both ways because on the builder side, basically with them and their lender, it's the, it's a math equation. Again, it's like, hey, three plus two is five but four plus one is also five. So they just move the money on their side of the equation to still get you to the same answer. And we wanna make sure you're getting the best deal and using that money the best way possible if you're trying to save money when buying a new construction home. So that was a lot, I know. Um, I hope it was helpful. I'm trying to drop as many tips as I can to, to help you when it comes to buying new construction here in DFW. If you found value in this, uh, subscribe to the channel. We're trying to put out as many resources and videos as we can to help uh, here in the DFW marketplace buy new construction. If you have questions, as always, contact information I told you earlier, it's at the bottom of the video. Reach out, call, text, email. Um, actually, text is usually my favorite because I'm a millennial. You need to browse homes. There's a link down in the description to do that. I promise I'm not going to spam you. Just want you to see some of the best deals out there that are happening in the new construction space. If you have questions, comments, issues, concerns, take them up with me down in the comments. I'd love to have a conversation. I'm here to help you, here to advocate and answer questions and serve you and your family any way I can. Thanks so much for hanging out. We'll see you in our next video. Bye for now.